Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Wednesday, November 28th, 2012. We begin with an exciting update from the world of nanotechnology. Here on Brainstorm, we sometimes cover very counterintuitive concepts, generally relating to quantum physics. We also often discuss technology and science breakthroughs related to alternative energy, such as solar. Photovoltaic solar panels have made some advances, and solar is one of the few energy sources that doesn't rely on driving a turbine with steam. That may soon change, with work done by scientists and engineers from Rice University. Now boiling water with the sun's energy isn't a new concept. With enough mirrors or lenses, the heat generated can be extremely intense. The crazy part about this new solar steam technology is that the water isn't being boiled. Well, that's not entirely true. The water just isn't being boiled in any conventional sense, in that the bulk of the water remains cold. This is possible thanks to light-activated nanoparticles, capable of converting around 24% of solar energy directly into heat. In solution, the particles rapidly disperse this heat, generating steam at a micro scale, and we weren't kidding about the cold water. As a demonstration, a scientist generated steam by focusing light on a test tube with the nanoparticle solution. The test tube was also in an ice bath. Although this technology isn't quite ready to drive turbines just yet, there are some exciting applications already being developed. Using these nanoparticles, engineers designed a solar steam-based autoclave capable of sterilizing medical instruments without needing electricity. They're also working on small-scale setups that could allow families in developing countries to process waste and purify water. The efficiency of the nanoparticles is pretty incredible compared to current photovoltaics and could improve as the technology is refined. Solar steam has a number of exciting uses, especially for the developing world, even potentially leading to solar-driven or solar-assisted steam turbines. Our next story is news from the world of neuroscience. A reoccurring topic on Brainstorm is optogenetics. Now an MIT team has developed a new device related to this relatively new area of study. Before we get into this device, let's discuss optogenetics itself. Originally developed by MIT, it's a precise way to stimulate neurons with light and is now being used by labs all over the world. You see, normal neurons create their electrical impulse with channel proteins in the membrane that allow a rush of ions. Channel proteins are common in nature. A certain kind, called opsins, are ion channels activated by light. So optogenetics is all about genetically engineering neurons to produce opsins. Using harmless viruses, researchers can even pick specific types of neurons to be modified, allowing them to be excited and or inhibited by certain colors of light. However, when dealing with a living brain, actually getting the light to its target can be an issue. Initially, a needle-like probe was used, with multiple light emitters down its length. The new device is a grid of about 100 of those probes, allowing for precise three-dimensional stimulation of a target brain area, about a cubic centimeter in size. With this level of control, optogenetic research should be greatly accelerated in helping us understand the brain. This technology will hopefully develop into neural prosthetics, treating disorders by precisely inhibiting or activating neurons using devices like this. And finally, from the world of genetics, an extensive analysis of the pig genome has recently been completed, led by researchers at the University of Illinois. That might not sound very important, but the analysis revealed insights with multiple implications. Firstly, the history of pig domestication and evolution. Not only did domestic pigs have their genome sequenced, but also 10 breeds of wild boar from across Europe and Asia. Although still considered the same species, there was significant genetic diversity between the boars and their domestic cousins. Comparisons also suggested that pigs were originally domesticated at least twice, in Western Eurasia and East Asia. Next is implications for modern pig genetics, and potentially how to improve upon it. Understanding their genome is essential for increasing the efficiency of pork production and keeping the animals healthier. Genes related to the immune system and the sense of smell are already being selected for in domestic pigs. Looking at the wild boar genome could also lead to useful genes to be bred or engineered into pigs. The last and potentially most important aspect of this study is the biomedical application of pigs to study human disease. Researchers found 112 proteins related to disease that are identical in both humans and pigs. 
Sequencing 48 other pigs revealed even more gene variants that could be used to model human diseases, including obesity, diabetes, dyslexia, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's disease. Further research should lead to more advances in all the areas we've discussed. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing, and be sure to check the links in the video description.